SmartSense is designed to be both simple and reliable. Before using SmartSense, please read the safety information in the SmartSense Connection Manual and view this video. If the system is used in a different way than specified, its protective measures might not be effective. The following items should be present in the package when it's open. A SmartSense system made up of a SmartSense enclosure, zip ties to mount the SmartSense unit, a quick start guide with login information, and a calibration certificate. SmartSense connects via Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or cellular to the SGS Web Portal dashboard, where many services are accessible, including real-time display of measurements, data logging, data download, and threshold alerts. Data is viewable from any internet-connected device, such as a smartphone, tablet, or PC. SmartSense sensors are specific to your application, in IAQ settings, keep away from photocopiers. For outdoor installations, place the power cable on the bottom side of the unit and at least six to 10 feet in the air. SmartSense power options are an American Standard NEMA 515, a five volt USB, a 12 volt external battery cable, or a solar rechargeable battery pack. Do not use another power supply with a SmartSense without consulting SGS because it could cause health risks and damage the system. Units come pre-configured for Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or cellular communication. For Ethernet, first connect SmartSense to an RJ45 Ethernet jack on a network with internet access. SmartSense then automatically connects to the server. Within five minutes, the first data is transferred. SmartSense can be configured for cellular access. To use cellular access, first make sure that the network coverage in SmartSense's location is sufficient, which is at least equivalent to one bar on most cellular phone networks. If you're having no readings on your portal, open the lid and push down the SIM card to make sure it's seated. For most users, the SIM card and web login is preset and will connect upon power up. If you have a different service provider, subscribe to an internet service that includes at least 250 megabytes of data communication per month with a micro SIM card. Note the APN, login, and password data from your provider. Follow the instructions in the SmartSense connection manual enclosed with your unit to change the connection parameters with the Ecom settings program. Within five minutes of setup, the first data point readings are transferred. For Wi-Fi access, follow the instructions in the SmartSense connection manual enclosed with your unit to change the connection parameters with the Ecom settings program. The SmartSense unit will then, and on each subsequent occasion, connect to the server via the Wi-Fi network. Within five minutes of setup, the first data point readings are transferred. To initiate SmartSense startup, choose a location for the measurement point that meets the following criteria. The unit can be mounted vertically and in many other ways. Consult with your SGS representative for the optimal mounting position. If it's an outdoor unit, the power cable will be coming out of the bottom. If it's an indoor unit, it will be coming out of the side. The unit should be as close as possible to the point of interest with at least 10 inches of free space on the sensor openings. Before setup, make sure that the deployment zone has a network connection, Wi-Fi or Ethernet, and power supply. To confirm you have power, connection, and data transfer, go to your portal. Log in and immediately click on the time series tab and look for the latest successful transmission time. Note that the time series tab does not automatically keep up to date with the latest readings. To see the newest readings, you must refresh the web page. To turn on the SmartSense, connect it to your designated power supply. It will automatically turn on. A blue and red LED will illuminate and flash through a short boot-up sequence. To view your air quality dashboard through the SmartSense online portal, reference your quick start guide for the URL, username, and password. Once powered up and communication is secured, note these light sequences. If no lights are on, the power is not applied effectively. You should check all the connections. Also check the antenna connection. This is also a failure point. Once the power is effectively applied and after the boot-up sequence, the blue light will stay on, indicating steady monitoring. Every minute, the blue light will turn off for up to 15 seconds, indicating an attempt to communicate to the web platform. If the blue light returns, communication was successful. If instead, a red light flashes before the blue light returns, communication was unsuccessful, and the unit will try again in one minute. 
Within five minutes of setup, the first data point readings are transferred. Troubleshoot by confirming communication setup, whether Ethernet connection, Wi-Fi settings, or cellular settings. Then, verify the strength of the Wi-Fi signal and cellular with separate devices. If you have a cellular unit that is not connecting, take corrective action by confirming that the SIM card is completely seated. As another step, verify the micro SD card is seated. The micro SD card is accessed from a small trap door. To open the door, slide it in the direction of the center of the circuit board with downward force. Swing it open and then remove the card. To reinsert the card, open the door, place it in the slot, fold the door over it and slide the door away from the center of the circuit board until it clicks closed. Take care not to damage or disengage the door while opening and closing. Questions? Contact SGS by phone, email, or live chat.